This morning we wanted to talk about customer growth strategies for small businesses. Um, where this came about was um, earlier this year we conducted some research to understand the biggest challenges faced by small business owners. Um, and in the purpose of the webinar today, I wanted to try and answer a lot of those questions that were raised. So I wanted to start by first of all understanding and looking at the small business landscape. So there's a lot of things going on in the macro environment. Um, which I will touch on as well. Um, but also there's some things happening to, which are particularly relevant for the small business audience. I then wanted to share some basic marketing principles. It's kind of the introduction, I suppose, to answering that question. What's the thinking behind your marketing and creating impactful marketing campaigns and also to help us to achieve our objective of gaining new clients? I then want to start thinking about how you might go about planning your marketing campaign creating a marketing plan and looking at budget conscious routes to market. Because I know budget is always a question with a lot of the clients that we work with. Think about what makes engaging content and impactful creative. So what does our content plan look like? Why do we even need a content, content plan? And how does that all start to come together? And then to finish up with one of the most important questions that I think many marketeers as well as small business owners often forget is actually thinking about, okay, well, how has my marketing performed? Has it worked or has it not worked? So just think about what some of our marketing metrics might be and, and how we might make that assessment. So what's happening in a small business landscape? Well, there's a lot of, a lot of things going on. We've obviously got things happening in the more, um, in the wider uh, macro environment. So you might have, um, you obviously got a, a forthcoming election coming up at the end of this year. We've got cost of living crisis, which tends to, which is obviously impacting people and influencing people's um, challenges that they're facing. Um, we've also got um, things that are perhaps more specifically relevant to the small business audience. So we're talking about um, the growth of artificial intelligence. So there's a lot of things which are um, coming in with that. Um, chat GBT is a really big one. I know quite a lot of the conversations I'm having quite recently is around, well, can we use chat GBT to create content? Um, you know, how does that work? If you've got a slightly bigger organisation, chatbots and things like that might um, also be a conversation. The answer to those questions is these kind of technological advances are, are brilliant. They can be really useful. But actually what we also need to remember is that fundamentally we're creating content for our end user. We're creating content for our, our consumers. So if we're writing a blog using chat GPT and it just creates a load of bland um, information, that's not going to get, that's not going to answer the pain points that our audience have. It's not going to encourage them to engage with us. But actually what will happen is that it just becomes vague noise. But actually what we want to be doing is to be helping our clients, putting them at the heart of everything that we're doing and engaging with them. Sustainability and our brand's um, CSR policy is also becoming increasingly important with many customers proactively choosing brands who who work in a similar way to them. So I know there's been quite a lot of discussions recently around B Corp registered organisations. So if you're somebody that those values are really important to, you're going to be wanting to work with similar kind of businesses uh, from a partnership perspective, but also your customers are going to be feeling the same way. So it's thinking about how can I bring those things into my organisation? And it's not just for a large organisation that that's relevant. That can be relevant for small businesses as well. Obviously, there's a variety of scales that you can look at um, from that perspective too. Connecting community and community. This is something which um, I attended a, a conference with the Chartered Institute of Marketing last year at Henley Business School. And this idea of community was really important. It was something that a lot of the big brands were talking about and seeing that lots of their customers really wanted them to focus on. So how can we create those um, communities to make our audiences feel special? It's important to continue to put our customers at the heart of everything because that helps us with innovation, it helps personalization of marketing messages, and it helps with the conversion process. I think with a small business um, organization, it's much easier to personalize and tailor our individual um, our individual products and offering and services in a much easier way versus a large organisation. I always use banks as a, as a great example of how not to do these things at the moment. Um, I was looking to try and connect with somebody quite recently, couldn't find a telephone number to actually talk to a human being anywhere, and it's incredibly frustrating. 
when they're wanting to talk about a mortgage application or a bank account. So really putting those that customer at the heart of their customer journey and, and using your marketing tools to help connect them and to make them feel valued and special is, is also really important. <clears throat> For some time, we've seen the growth of video. So the way in which a lot of the social media networks are progressing and developing is reflecting that we've got Instagram reels, we've got um, lives on Facebook, we've got video on LinkedIn. And we can definitely see that with those kind of media, the algorithms in those networks are sharing that content much more. We're seeing that people want to connect and consume media and information in that way. So before we make a start um, in kind of thinking about how we go about creating um, an effective marketing campaign, I wanted just to share some basic marketing principles. Because I think often there's a misconception that marketing and effective marketing is perhaps just a leaflet or a, a poster or an ad. We often just see the end, um, the end result. What we don't see is the thought process behind it. So if we think about John Lewis's Christmas campaign, for example, that campaign would take literally months to create and develop. Um, it's not something that just happens um, overnight. Um, so it's really important to put the thought behind your marketing. Now, obviously, the small business owner, that process might be quicker than if you're a larger cor corporation. So why is marketing important? Well, it's important because it helps us to acquire new customers. It helps us drive visibility and share our branding. So we've got consistency of message, which will help with the cut through. It can help us create thought leadership to help build that authority. It can help us to build trust with our clients and to build our relationships with them. It can also help to set us apart from the competition. We often talk about the no like trust model, which is reflected of this. So a lot of the marketing, the purpose behind the marketing is so that our audience know who we are, they like what we do, and then they trust us enough to purchase from us. So when establishing our marketing campaigns and marketing activity, we need to assure that we're thinking we're consistently engaging with our audience at a frequency that works both for, for them and for us as the business owner. We need to produce a streamlined content strategy that resonates with our audience. So what I mean by that is we want to make sure that all of our marketing messages are consistent at any given time, rather than talking about one message in social media and then something different in email marketing. What we see is that we need to, I think there's research that shows it's about five to seven times we need to touch an individual before they know us and trust us enough to purchase from us. So if that message is consistent, both visually with consistent branding and consistent in content, we've got more chance of getting that cut through and resonating with that audience. We need to focus on key channels, so given, given the limited budgets that many small business owners work with, we need to think about where our audience hangs out. So. Rather than trying to engage with five different social media networks, for example, let's just use, just use one, do that well, and then build from there. You can also create things like a lead magnet um, to expand our potential client prospect base as well and to engage with them. So that could be ebooks, that could be events, um, there could be a number of different ways, um, conferences, but all sorts of different ways that we can we can start to achieve that. I want to just share the kind of the basic marketing principle, which is, is going to form the basis of answering that question that we have um, around how do we gain new customers. So the thinking behind the marketing process and effectively creating effective marketing campaigns is, um, is creating our marketing strategy. And within that, we need to first of all evaluate where we are. We need to do our thinking and our planning. We need to develop our plan. Um, so once we know where we want to go, then we need to think about how we're going to get there. We need then to start to implement that activity, thinking about effective content and impactful creative. And as we talked about earlier, we need to think about analysing actually how do we know if things have been effective or not. So the start point, planning our marketing campaign. We need to start by thinking about where our business is now and where we want to head to over maybe the next 12, 3 or 5 years time. Depending on where you are with your business, um, there'll be different levels of detail that you might want to think about those, those different stages. Typically, we'd think about five to six smart business objectives that we might like to give ourselves over that 12 month time frame. So they need to be specific, measured, achievable, relevant, and timed. So it's not enough just to say, for example, I want to get more clients. 
actually it's about saying, okay, I need two more retained clients um, over the next month to work on a particular project or to sell um, or to do a, a specific piece of work for. It can be really useful as part of this review process to think about what are our competitors doing? Are there any, any learnings or um, thinking that we can take and evolve and, and that will maybe prompt our thinking? Um, so, for example, if you're um, a personal trainer, for example, and you see people there's a, a need and a, an interest in creating a running group, um, then that could be a new product that you might like to bring to the, to the market. Think about what our audience wants. We'll come on to talk about the audience in just a moment. That may also give us ideas and inspiration for creating and innovating new, new products. One of the things I'd like to think about, and, and hopefully you've got this in the email that I sent out over the last day or so, think about what, what is it that with your organisation, what is it that you want to achieve over the next quarter? What's the real, what's the maybe one or two things that will make a difference? And perhaps we can come back to that after, after the webinar. So understanding your target audience, for me, this is really the golden nugget that underpins all of your marketing and much of your, your business development as well. Once you know and understand your target audience, then you can create products and services um, to help and support them. There are many ways to think about that. Um, some questions that you might like to consider is what's their demographic? So what's their life state? What's their age? Where are they based? You know, who are they? Um, what, what, what's their kind of stage in life is like? What pain points do you solve? So what are the challenges that your organization solves for them? So is it that you're a visitor attraction and you provide great family memories? Um, uh, sorry, that's the, the kind of the solving of the problem. You know, the pain point might be that you're, um, you know, you're wanting, you know, somebody is looking for something to do to take their family out. Then the dream might be that you provide um, the uh, great family memories. Think about what they do in their spare time. So what media do they read? What else do you know about them? Um, that can be really useful because when you're creating your content plan, it can help give you ideas of way, ways of engaging with your audience. So rather than always talking about business messages and business promotions or, or focused content, we can start to integrate it with things that are perhaps a bit more personal. Um, Chris, I know you'll like what this one, but it's definitely the case that dogs and cats are going to be um, gaining much more engagement, the most engagement in social media networks, for example. So if you've got an audience that enjoys being outside and are dog lovers, that's great. You can look to start to share content um, in a relevant way for your organisation. Research can definitely provide a deeper understanding of your target audience. So we generally start by visualising who we think this audience is, and then we will conduct some research to verify that understanding. So that could be a customer questionnaire. Um, for example, we send out a monthly questionnaire at the beginning of every year to understand um, the challenges that people face in the forthcoming year ahead. It could be informally, just talking to your clients and just dropping in conversation to understand some of the challenges that they have. Or it can be more formal focus groups and um, to really gain a more in-depth understanding of, of who your target audience is. So I wanted to think about start to think about the planning process and actually how do we start to connect with these audiences. We talk a lot about our marketing foundations with our clients. So that might be creating a website, which is effectively your shop front, um, writing a regular blog, perhaps on a monthly basis, using email marketing as part of your media mix to connect with your audience, selecting the right social media platform, thinking about um, organic SEO, and then getting out and talking to your audience. So that could be via um, networking, or webinars, um, but getting out there and talking to people about your audience. Once you've created your kind of base level of, of marketing foundations, then we can start to build on that. So we've created our online presence. We might then start to think about building an email campaign. Um, if we're communicating with our audience regularly, one of the benefits of email marketing is it just keeps your business and your organisation at the forefront of your potential and your target audience's mind. It can also help create that personalisation. So we were talking earlier about how customers are really seeking that personalisation. Um, email marketing is a fantastic tool to enable us to do that and also to cross-sell and upsell. So if you've got a larger organisation or a visitor attraction um, and you've got one, um, perhaps one particular product or service, 
or event happening and then you might want to talk to different audiences about it so email marketing is a really effective tool to be able to enable us to do that being active in social media is really important to help us to generate leads drive awareness um, and also to get a little bit of insight into our customers as well it can be a useful tool for that too partnership marketing when we're working on a budget is also really valuable if we've got complementary businesses that are working side by side with each other um, with similar audiences, then we can talk about um, the cross promotion. Um, so one example was that was the thing uh, that was, was talking to um, somebody from Woodson Manor recently. So they were working with um, Blenheim Palace and talking with coach tours about how they might provide um, a, a partner activity. Or perhaps if you're an accountant and working with a bookkeeper, then those two services potentially are complementary. So it's thinking about who, who are the partners and, and how can we, we broaden our reach? If we do then have a little bit of budget available, things like Google AdWords are a great way to expand um, our reach, boosting um, and advertising in social media. Um, we also might look at um, PR sponsorship and podcasts as well to help boost our reach and to share our knowledge and showcase our authority in our particular field. So if we've created our strategy, we kind of, we've done our pre-thinking, we know what we're doing, we know where we're going, we might then wish to create our marketing plan so that we're really clear on the roadmap as to how we move forward. So what we might include is which media are we going in, what kind of messaging or what, what campaign are we going to be running at a particular time. Um, I was asked recently what the kind of the, the average marketing budget would be, um, and broadly it's between 2 and 10% of monthly revenue ideally should be invested in marketing. So you've got that continual um, communication, you're continually the front of your customers' mind, um, and you're able to, um, to raise awareness and continue to drive um, knowledge that your, your business and organisation is there. One of the really um, frustrating things I often see is that when businesses are, are struggling or there's challenges, they often, one of the first things to be cut is the marketing budget. But actually that's the reverse that should be happening because if, we're, if the business is slowing down, if Perhaps we're seeing a seasonal impact. We should be going out to market and talking further to our clients rather than rather than kind of taking a step back. So one of the particular questions that came out in our research is around how to grow your social media in audience. And social media for me always forms part of the marketing mix. I think it's quite um, quite a struggle to, to just focus on it because actually when we get all of these media working together, that's when it becomes really powerful. So thinking about um, providing relevant content and interesting content consistently, using relevant hashtags to expand our reach over particular topics, thinking about the right networks, so once we know who our audience is, we can work out where they're hanging out, being clear on our goals and objectives and understanding what success looks like. So that comes back to our smart goals that we set at the beginning of the process. Actively engage, so go out there and comment on other people's posts and content. It's not a one-way medium, and I think sometimes some people forget that it's social media, it's a conversation. We talked about collaboration, but we could also offer competitions, incentives, or offers. Um, we can invite people to events, um, we can share video content, and of course, as we talked about already, we can pay for advertising um, or to boost the post. So there's a lot that we can be doing to kind of try and grow that particular, that particular media and following. So what make a, makes good content? Content underpins all of our marketing in today's digital world. Um, as we've talked about, that would might be via blogs, email marketing, social media. We kind of create mini campaigns as we go across the year. Um, as we talked earlier about it being really important to have a consistent message at any one particular time. So January, for example, you might be talking about new year, new challenges. Um, perhaps towards the end of the year, we might be talking about planning for the year ahead. So there's lots of content and depending upon your business, you, you, will, you will need to, to kind of flex and change the, the content focus. It's really important to have a consistent tone of voice and branding as well. Um, Helen, I know that's something that you're particularly um, passionate about too. But making sure that your brand guidelines and your branding flows through everything that you're doing is really important. Again, one of the questions that came out in the research is how do I achieve cut through? Well, one of the one of the ways of doing that is being really visual and to make sure that our branding is consistent across all of our content. There's lots of content ideas um, all over the place. Lots of people often say to me, God, I just don't know how to, I don't know where to start with content. 
Um, this is a slide that I'm happy to share with everyone later. But this just gives some re a really top line summary of the kind of things that you can look at. So there's a lot going on around us, there's a lot going around in the news, um, things about what the competitors are doing, there's blogs, inspirational quotes, promotions, um, sharing tips and wisdom. So there's all sorts of things, all sorts of content that we could share. I think the challenge actually then becomes curating things which are relevant and useful for your audience. So what makes impactful creative? So once you've got your content plan, you've chosen your media, you know what you're doing and where you're going, is then we know then need to create the visual element that goes that runs alongside that. Definitely less is more. So try and keep copy um, and uh, calls to action to a minimum. Um, I did recently see um, a leaflet where um, you know, someone um, was kind of saying to me, well, this, this hasn't really worked for me. You know, someone that I'd met at a, a network. A meeting, so could you just have a look at it for me and see what you think? And I sort of looked at it and went, There's no call to action on here, you've forgotten to include the telephone number. So, being really mindful of thinking about the messaging, being single minded and clear, um, and not forgetting um, the call to action as well uh, is really important. And with all of these, these creative, it's a, it's a continual journey, so we need to continue to test and learn what works. It's much easier to do that within the social media and email and digital space than versus printed media. Um, but it's about getting that balance right and making sure we're, we're reflecting on the campaigns as, as we move forward. So what does success look like? Continually tracking and monitoring the success of our marketing campaigns is really important. Simply do more of what works and less of what doesn't. We obviously need to be clear on what our metrics are to understand what, what does and doesn't, doesn't work to make that decision. Um, but we're really lucky in today's digital world that we have quite a lot of um, key things at our um, at our fingertips that we can we can easily make a, an informed decision as to whether things have been successful or not. So, for example, we could look at our visit, uh, website visit figures. We can look at social media engagement, at comments, likes, and shares. We can look at email marketing open and click through rates. We can look at sales and business that comes in, of course. Um, we can look at the number of clients with general feedback, um, tools like TripAdvisor or LinkedIn recommendations or, or Google reviews are really powerful to help also create authority in that space, kind of taking us back to what we were talking about earlier and building that know, like, trust model. Um, recommendations and reviews and positive endorsements from other customers is really powerful to help new customers make the decision to engage with your products or service. 